Chapter 118 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray Chapter 118 of Falling Short of the Grace of God Hebrews chapter 12 verses 15 to 17 Looking carefully, lest there be any man that falleth short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby the many be defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person as esau who for one morsel of meat sold his own birthright for ye know that even when he afterward desired to inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with tears take heed brethren lest there be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief was the warning of chapter three and in chapter four let us fear, lest any one come short of the rest. And in chapter 10, let us consider one another, exhorting one another. Here it is the same thought, looking carefully. The word really means taking oversight. Lest there be any man, which is not only to care for himself, but for his brother too. Lest there be any man, there must not, through our lack of faithfulness, be one that falls short of the grace of God. Here we have again the great danger against which the epistle warns us earnestly. It is the terrible complaint from which every congregation suffers. There are so many who, just as Israel left Egypt, but came short of the promised rest, for a time make an earnest Christian profession, and yet come short of the grace of God, receive the grace of God in its beginnings in vain, never truly become possessed of it and by it. As it was true of the Galatians, with all their zeal for religion and its forms, so of these too, ye are fallen away from grace. Galatians 5 verse 4. The running of the race with patience, holiness or even the pursuit of it, the joy and the power and the fruit of the Christian life are all wanting. Let us look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Three things are mentioned as causes and marks of this falling short of grace. Let any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby the many be defiled. The root of bitterness may refer to a person who by wrong conduct or doctrine causes trouble and leads others astray. Or it may refer to the error itself, some mode of thought or behaviour by which the many are defiled. The spirit of the world, too great interest in temporal things, bitterness in religious differences, being led by the carnal reason more than by God's word or spirit, giving way to sin. Any of these things may be the root of bitterness in regard to which the call sounds, Be careful, look round and watch. Lest there be any fornicator. Here a special sin is mentioned. Each church as a whole must watch against this sin, not waiting till it is found, but looking carefully and doing everything to prevent, lest there be any. Christians must maintain in society the high moral tone which refuses to condone sin in either high or low. In all its members and among its young people it must be a witness for purity of life and lips and heart. And to all who are fallen it must seek in the power of the gospel to offer the helping hand of love. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one mess of meat sold his own birthright. We have seen that faith is ever the separation from the visible. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob sacrificed all to become heirs of the heavenly city of the future and the heavenly blessing. Esau lived in the present. For a momentary satisfaction he parted with his blessing, the promise of God, and his inheritance in the future. Even so there are numbers who are called Christians and yet are profane. There is nothing sacred or holy in their spirit or life. They are absorbed in the present of the possessions and pleasures of the world. To speak of their pursuit of holiness would be a mockery. Let us think of such, and mourn and pray and labour for them, looking carefully lest there be any one of you a profane person like Esau. For ye know, when he afterward desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Remember the yet afterward of faith. What a contrast here, the afterward of the worldling. For the present with its pleasures, 
the divine birthright, the promise of God, and the future inheritance is neglected. And when it is too late, when the heart is shriveled up, and the power of the will and the power of faith is lost, the thought of something better is awakened, but, alas, it is found to be too late. Many shall seek to enter in, and shall not be able, when once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut the door. He afterward desired to inherit, but was rejected. Looking carefully, lest any man fall short of the grace of God. What a solemn thing the Christian life is, the race for life we have to run, with what dangers we are surrounded. Our daily needs and our daily food may be our destruction. It was eating that lost Esau his birthright. It was eating that lost Adam and his seed, the kingdom of God. It was in refusing to eat, when Satan tempted him in the wilderness, that Jesus won back heaven for us. In our home, in our body, in our daily need, the temptations to ease and enjoyment, to sloth and standing still, are ever around us and in us. Let us take heed, lest we fall short. Let us look carefully, and see if there are not others around us who are fainting and turning back, and let us count it our duty and privilege to care for them. Let us beseech grace of God to give us power in faith and love to be the deliverer of our people and our brethren. If we feel powerless to speak to others or to influence them, let us lay ourselves before God with the cry that He would use us to save some, he can fill us with his spirit and his love. Looking carefully, the word is the same as bishop, overseer, lest any man, all to watch over each other. Do we really take the state of Christians to heart? Do we indeed look round carefully and lovingly to consider what can be done? Consider Jesus, consider one another. The two commands are inseparable. Afterward he was rejected. O my brother, if you have escaped this danger, I beseech you, by the mercy of God, think of those who are in it, and say to God that you will do anything he wishes you to save them from that terrible fate.